Coming up on Positively Ernie, hundreds of kids are going to college thanks to a sports legend who never even finished high school. How struggling families are getting help to make ends meet. We'll tell you why pets can be the best medicine. Your heart rate goes down, your respiratory rate goes down, your blood pressure goes down when you interact with a dog. Dr. Oz and his wife are celebrating a big anniversary and it has nothing to do with marriage. And see how schools are turning trash into cash. There's too much garbage and it's wasting up a lot of space. So get ready to feel a bit better about life. Positively Ernie is brought to you this week by the Red Apple Group and Gristiti Supermarkets. Hi everyone, I'm Ernie Anastas and welcome. For the next half hour, we're going to focus on some of the good things that are taking place around us. You know, amid our everyday difficulties and challenges, including rampaging Mother Nature, it's easy to miss that there are a lot of wonderful people who are working hard to make this a better world. And I'm excited to tell you about them. So let's get started with a true power couple. We caught up with tennis legends Andre Agassi and Stephanie Graff at school, literally. The school that Andre built. It's in the heart of his hometown, glittering Las Vegas. Andre knows that for many kids here, the chances of their finishing high school, let alone going to college, are worse than the odds offered in the nearby casinos. So I set about the Herculean task of building a K-12 charter school in the most economically challenged area of Las Vegas. We're proud to say we've had three graduating classes, 100% have gone on to universities, so, so far so great. Founded in 2001, the Agassiz College Preparatory Academy lives up to the motto on the door. These students can truly believe in themselves, thanks to a guy who left school at 16 to turn pro. I didn't have education in my life, but I had tennis. A lot of kids don't have education and they don't have anything they can fall back on. Where do they end up? If they're lucky enough to land a spot at the Agassiz Academy, they'll most likely end up in college. And because Andre and Steffi are ambassadors for Longines, the famous Swiss watchmaker supports the school with scholarships. The essence of good discipline is respect. The school's success is based upon a commitment to excellence, respect, and hard work. Quite simply, the academy demands more from its teachers, students, and parents. For us, the most, one of the most important factors is the length of our school day, eight hours versus six hours. And Andre doesn't just talk the talk. The students will tell you they often see him walking the walk in the school halls. It's not like he just um, built a school and then like never comes back. He's always here wondering what's going on and in the loop. He's making a big difference in my life and my classmates' life. Perhaps nothing signifies the difference the Academy is making more than this walkway. It's called the bridge. Only graduating students are allowed to cross it. And as part of the graduation ceremony, they proudly hang the colors of the colleges they're going to. My brother graduated last year and he, I got to watch him walk across the bridge and tape his college pennant up there. And I'm looking forward to that. And I'm sure she will. For so many kids in Las Vegas, that would have been an unthinkable goal. Meanwhile, Steffi is helping children who are facing different challenges. Steffi Graf is still the only woman to win all four Grand Slam singles titles and the Olympic gold medal in the same year. Like Andre, she started a charitable foundation while still competing. Her focus is on children who are victims of war. The Children for Tomorrow Foundation provides therapy for traumatized kids from Africa, Afghanistan, and Southern Europe. We're looking for mother inner wounds through violence, through persecution, and you know, you don't have to look very far to unfortunately find a lot of those children. You always feel like you're not reaching, reaching enough. When it comes to caring about others, clearly Steffi and Andre are well matched. By the way, their two kids have one more reason to be proud of their dad. 
The former high school dropout was awarded an honorary degree by the University of Nevada. Isn't that great? All right, you said that you have a story to share with me about celebrities using their success to do good things for others. Yeah, uh, Bette Midler and the oh, New York yeah. Restoration Project are keeping New York City beautiful. Wonderful. So thank you to Bette Midler. Like like the wind beneath my wings, <laughs> yes, right? You exactly. bet. How about you? I'm Bill Clinton. He has a great initiative to help kids get better um, school lunches, healthier um, at our public schools. Good work. Yeah. Very I know. nice. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, by the way, we want to tell you in upcoming shows, we're going to tell you about Nick Cannon and Yankee CC Sabathia, both of whom are helping to make a difference in their own way. But there's still a lot more ahead in this program, and we'll be right back. Keep it right here. If you have a positive story you'd like Ernie to know about, go to ErnieAnastas.com and click on the comment tab. And you can follow Ernie on Twitter. Hi, I'm John Katsimatidis. And I'm Margot Katsimatidis. Christidis has been a part of New York for 120 years. And it's been part of the Red Apple family for over 30 years. As chairman of the board of Red Apple Group, I want our city to thrive. I grew up here. And we love this city. That's why we're dedicated to helping the next generation of New Yorkers. We truly care about the community we serve. We're proud of our past. But we're even more focused on the future. The spirit of giving. You know, we talk about it during the holidays, but the need is out there all year long. Most of these people have jobs. Some have even more than one. It's a hard reality in these tough economic times that we're seeing an increase in what's called the working poor. People who can't always afford the basics, like nutritious meals. Hello. That's why organizations like the St. Francis Food Pantries and Shelters are so vital. Thank you. Here, it's neighbors helping neighbors. Kathleen, what's on the menu? Chicken. Greek chicken with oregano and garlic. I have roasted potatoes, it's a Greek salad. We have cucumbers, tomatoes, olives, cheese. <laughs> Yummy stuff. The theme of today's meal is a taste of Greece, a menu certainly dear to my heart. Baklava. Mm. But no matter what your heritage, the message is universal. We want to serve them and we want to put a smile on their face. And we want to show that we love them and care for them. People and families come here to get a little extra help to make ends meet. It's hard. We try to struggle sometimes. The money sometimes don't don't go all the way. And this, this helps us out a whole lot during It's the not month. that easy, is it? No, it's not. And this kind of thing can make a huge difference. It sure does. St. Francis Food Pantries and Shelters serves more than a million meals throughout the year at events like Thanksgiving in February, summer fiesta, and back-to-school picnics. But the organization does a lot more. With 38 locations around New York, Westchester, and New Jersey, it provides a wide range of needed services, from safe havens to counseling to clothing. The positive impact is truly magical. But to put events like these together, it takes more than magic. It takes volunteers and generous corporate sponsors. Without a doubt, our corporate friends are our great neighbors, and with them come volunteers who see their fellow New Yorkers as their neighbors, their brothers and sisters in need. Many of the volunteers at this event are from Con Edison. Enjoy your meal. It's terrific when your company is behind you and you're doing special things. You're a volunteer, Stacy. also. Tell me why you like it. Yes, well, it's good to give back to the community and do something that's good for New York City. Very personal, isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a fun and having a good time. I can see the smile on your faces. Thank you, guys. Okay. If you or your company are interested in making a positive difference, this is a great way to do it. Everybody has gifts and talents, and we all need to share them with each other to make this city a better place to live. There it is, and Father Francis, you and your organization do great work for the past 20 years in this city. If people are watching, they want to get involved, what should they do? Reflect upon what they can do. They can hold a food drive, a canned good drive, they can donate clothing, they can donate whatever. Whatever it takes for an adult mm -hmm. or a child to live yep. is what we can use in need. Someone would like to get involved and now they want to know how do they contact you? What do they do? The first thing they can do is call 
212-279-6171. That's the office. Okay. Or go to the website, stfrancispantries.org. I have a feeling you're going to hear from a lot of people. Ah, uh, we hope so. <laughs> Father Francis, thanks for joining us. Great job. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. A survey of 153 countries found that the most generous people in the world are Americans. We're most likely to donate, volunteer, or help a stranger. Hello, I'm John Katsimatidis, chairman of New York's Red Apple Group and Gristides. And I'm Margot Katsimatidis. Gristides is a neighborhood supermarket in the city that John and I love very much. We care deeply about our customers and our community. That's why we support so many scholarships and charities involving young people, the future of the city, and programs like Positively Ernie. We're proud to be part of the life of the greatest city on earth. All right, here's a brilliant concept, saving money and the planet at the same time. It's so simple, even kids in elementary school grasp it. There's too much garbage and it's wasting up a lot of space. Schools across America are like mini factories, turning out tons of trash every day. And they have to pay millions to have all that garbage hauled away. Two, three, four, seven. Here at the East Amwell School in New Jersey, these fifth graders have made a big discovery. There's gold in that garbage. We're saving trash, and then there would be less in the dumpsters. Dump them all in there. But they're not just separating trash to be recycled. They're actually selling it. We have over 20 different items that we collect. We get money for our school from doing that, and those funds go into a little activity fund that we're able to spend on the schools. Of course, not all garbage can be reused, but you'd be surprised at the many things we throw out that can bring cash in. We recycle all sorts of things. Candy wrappers. Type. Glue. Markers. Chip bags. Wrappers for energy bars. Cleaning products. Computer keyboards. It's sorted, weighed, packaged, and then sent. Not to a landfill, but to a company that buys it all. Fantastic. But what does the company do with all that trash? We went to find out. Hi, Ernie. Welcome to TerraCycle, a company that takes trash and turns it into affordable, sustainable, and stylish products. Come on and check it out. Let's take a tour. TerraCycle runs free recycling programs for schools nationwide, where they're paid to collect items like this Capri Sun juice pouch or this Frito-Lay chip bag. For every one that a school collects, we donate two cents back to them or a charity of their choice. We then take these materials and turn them into fun, eco-friendly products like the lunchbox that you see here made out of Capri Sun drink pouches. That's not all that TerraCycle makes. Take this chip bag, for example. We can take this chip bag and turn it into a really cool tote bag like this. Or we can take granola bar wrappers and turn them into the backpack that you see here. Or one of my personal favorite items, which is a laptop case made out of used billboards. This is actually the material from the billboards on the side of highways. TerraCycle has got a really awesome business model. The way that our programs operate is we're not only taking trash out of the landfill, diverting millions, even billions of units of waste from going to landfill, but we also donate millions of dollars to schools and local communities, and we're teaching kids how to be environmentally responsible. It's certainly a lesson that's being learned at East Amwell. The whole school community pitches in to collect recyclable trash. So far, it's brought the school motorized bleachers in the gym, a giant playground sandbox, a greenhouse, and special plants that attract butterflies for science classes. And for you, Ernie, we have this special gift. This is a reusable tote bag made from Kraft cheese wrappers. Okay, now this brings up a word recently added to our vocabulary, upcycling. Rather than deconstructing, which is what you do when you recycle, upcycling uses the item as it is to make something new, like this, like my new tote bag. Isn't this cool? Yeah. yeah. Upcycling cool. uses less energy and makes more of a fashion statement, don't you think? Yeah. yeah that's nice. Yeah. It's yeah. Terrific. Good looking stuff. <laughs> His first book was rejected 27 times, but he didn't give up and eventually wrote 47 children's books. His name, Theodore Geisel. We know him as Dr. Seuss. I, 
I really like this story. Sometimes just what the doctor ordered is simply a four-footed furry visitor. Lexi and owner Sasha are always welcome at the Mary Manning Walsh Nursing Home on Manhattan's east side. They're one of the many teens from pet partners that visit residents here. Many residents don't have the opportunity to leave the house because they're physically impaired. Many of them don't have family. So we bring a little bit of outside joy. She's a beaut. It's not just heartwarming, it's actually good medicine. She loves me. Experts call it animal-assisted therapy. Hi, everybody. Having animals around and visiting lowers their blood pressure, also low, lowers their pulse rate and it's very good for reducing stress. We know that there are residents here that are waiting for our visits each and every time we come, and uh, there are over 11,000 pet partner teams currently in the nation visiting a variety of institutions. Here we go, here we are. David Fry is a dog expert. You may have seen him co-host the Westminster Dog Show, but on Wednesdays, you could find him and Grace visiting veterans at the VA hospital. She knows dog people. Grace seems to have a nose for who needs some extra affection. She sure likes people, huh? When we walk into a room full of veterans, the energy changes. That's what it's all about. You get people to smile when maybe they haven't had much to smile about, get them to talk, get them to, to think about something other than the challenges that they're facing. A dog is a, is a very pleasant diversion. It's a wonderful thing to have somebody come by and say, here, pet the dog, you know? <laughs> Someone visiting me, you know what I'm saying? and it gives me kind of a warm feeling. What a wonderful organization. Pet Partners gives new meaning to the phrase creature comfort. Talk about a story that's really positive. Oh. Oh. We are back again with our friend Dr. Oz. Good to have you, of course, always. Uh, we were just talking about animal-assisted therapy. Good story, and you made a good point. You said that you don't necessarily have to have a pet. Even if you look at a picture of a fu fuzzy little creature, it's good. It works. You know, it, we are all like little raindrops falling into the ocean of life. Yeah. And when we feel it by connection, it could be to plants, pets, uh, each other. Uh, a picture works because it reminds you of that warmth you should have in your heart. Well, we all need that. Uh, I know that you are very concerned about health care, obviously, and so is your wife, Lisa. Yeah. And you've launched this amazing initiative on the Health Corps, which I think is really wonderful, and you're targeting the next generation young people. Tell us a little bit about that. Health Corps, uh, this is its 10th anniversary, actually, coming up. Uh, I started it because I was involved in a bunch of government programs to help with childhood obesity, and I can tell you, we don't have anything that's going to work. Uh, in the older kids especially, because at the end of the day, although we see them as the weakness of our society, they're the strength. Mm -hmm. We need to harvest what they can offer us in terms of getting their bodies and their lives in shape. So the Health Corps is based on the concept of the Peace Corps. Uh, just like the Peace Corps would train young, energetic college graduates to send them off to Botswana to build dams, we do the same thing with those same kids, but we put them in schools around the country. And we started right here in New York City, huge amount of support from Mayor Bloomberg, uh, uh, Council.